quasilinear preferences. So the general form of the quasilinear preferences are like this. So it is one linear and the another nonlinear function. Uh, so what do we do out here? Let's just draw this function first. So 4 equals to root of x plus y. That is uh, the function. That is we need to draw the indifference curve first. So we have taken some utility. Let's say for example 4. And then we have just talk, talked about uh, what could be the different values of x and y which can give me 4 for this. So let us say when y is 0 x would be 16. When y is 1 x could be 9 to give you 4. When y is 2 x is 4. When y is 3 x is 1. So you plug in these values and you will be getting this kind of the curve. Right, you will be getting this kind of the curve. So you have y out here, you have x out here and you will be getting a curve like this. So y is 0, x 16 or you can also have one more point where x is 0 and y is 4. So something like this, like this here. And if you increase the utility, it is going to be just the vertical translate of this. Huh? If you're just going to increase the utility, it will be just the vertical translate of this. Yeah. So supposedly if uh, mm, if this was the budget line, right, I hope you guys could see this, then this was my optimal bundle. So if I increase the income, let's say till this point, this becomes my optimal bundle. So there is no difference in the amount of x which we have. There is no difference in the amount of x which we have. Um, let us say like this. So as your income is increasing, the amount of x which you are consuming is same and the amount of y which you are consuming is increasing. So this is what the definition of the income of our curve. So as income is increasing, how the optimals are going to change from x uh, in in the xy space uh, okay can we also just find this out can we also just find this out because this can also be the case of the corner solution as well so let me just uh, find this out also so we'll uh, first of all let's just think uh, is the mrs diminishing out here or not uh, because in case if MRS, MRS is diminishing, then uh, we can probably use uh, these are the indifference curves would be convex. Of course, I can see that. But how do you check whether MRS is diminishing? So what is MRS? That is del u by del x upon del u by del y. So it is 1 upon 2 root x upon 1. So this is 1 upon 2 root x beta. Hmm. So what is the diminishing MRS rule? Either when x is in, I mean ideally, I mean if you if you look at the Copdeclus function, if you move from one point here to let's say this point, then what happens? Your x is increasing and y is decreasing. Hmm. So the diminishing MRS test Diminishing MRS test could be so when is MRS falling? Either when X is increasing and Y is decreasing, or when X is constant and Y is decreasing, 
or when x is increasing and y is constant right so here this follows this rule so either of these can follow the diminishing mrs so here when x is going to increase your mrs is going to fall so mrs is falling out here so diminishing mrs uh, okay so i'll use the lagrange out here I'll use the Lagrange out here. Achha, one more example uh, could be in what kind of scenarios you'll be using uh, these uh, quasi-linear preferences. Uh, so maybe you can just say, um, for example, X is uh, pencils and Y is other goods. Right or X is salt, Y is other good, other goods, Y is other goods. So what is happening out here is that uh, you're spending some amount on salt, but you won't keep on spending more and more amount on salt only when you have the amount what is necessary for you to satisfy your wants, right? So then you will be spending more on the other goods. So, and this salt and pencils and all these are, these are very, very small part of your total, uh, they, they form the expenditure on salt or expenditure on pencils, they form a very small part of the total expenditure which you are making. Hmm. So, as your income is increasing, the total expenditure on these necessary goods, you can say, is falling, right? the share of total expenditure you can say is falling. So earlier, let's say your income was just 20 rupees. Hmm? Earlier, let's say your income was just 20 rupees and uh, you were only buying salt. So you were consuming everything on salt only. You were spending entire thing on salt. So the share of, ex share of expenditure on salt is 100%. Now your income has increased to 40. You are still consuming you're still spending only 20 rupees on this. So it is 50% now. Right? It has increased to 100. It is just, it is still 20. So the share of expenditure on salt is just 20%. So the expenditure on this good is falling. Share of expenditure on this good is falling. Not the expenditure. Expenditure is constant. And... Uh, so what is happening is that uh, you have the, you can also find out using Lagrange. So it is root of x plus y plus lambda m minus p1x minus p2y. So you can say del L by del x. 1 upon 2 root x, right, minus lambda p1 equals to 0. Del L by del y, 1 minus lambda p2 equals to 0. Del L by del lambda, m minus p1x minus p2y. So you divide first by second, you'll be getting what? 1 upon 2 root x equals to p1 by p2. This is equation 1, this is equation 2, this is equation 3. So you can just write this as 1 upon 4x is equal to p1 square upon p2 square. So what is your x star equals to p2 square upon 4 p1 square. So there is no m out here. It is independent of m. Hmm? Independent of m. It doesn't depend upon income. You have to buy this. There is no ifs and buts about it. You have to buy this. So, since this is independent of income and you will be consuming this much, 
so it becomes a necessity good you still have to buy this now what I'll do I'll substitute x star equals to p2 square upon 4p1 square in 3 right so it is m minus p1 in place of x star it is p2 square upon 4p1 square minus p2y equals to 0 right so I can just cut one of them so it is 4mp1 right minus p2 square equals to 4p1 p2 y I, I hope I have done this right here so your y star is 4mp1 minus p2 square upon 4 p1 p2 well you would want uh, you do not want your x star y star to be negative can uh, x be negative no it can't p1 and p2 are assumed to be strictly positive they are of course positive They're strictly positive uh, so x star is greater than 0 there is no problem with that as far as y star is concerned if you look at the denominator p1 p2 are positive 4 p1 p2 is positive no problem with the denominator but for some values of m p1 and p2 it might be possible that your y star comes out to be negative right so if 4 m p1 minus p2 square is less than 0 then what will happen y star would be negative but there is nothing like negative y y star would be equal to 0 well, if y star would be equal to 0, then it would be what? It means that you are going to spend your entire income on x. You know? So, in that case, your x star would be m by p1. Huh? Of course, if 4mp1 minus p2 square is equal to 0, then also y star is 0. And if y star is 0, then what happens? m equals to p1x plus p2 0. x star would be m by p1. y star would be 0. But when 4m p1 minus p2 square is positive, then you will have an interior solution. So here you have the corner solution. Why? Because you're just consuming x. You're not consuming y. Huh? So you have a corner solution out here. So this is what the corner solution would look like. Hmm? And uh, if 4mp1 minus p2 square is positive right then what you have found out that is the answer which is p2 square upon 4p1 square y star would be 4mp1 so this is an interior solution You are consuming both of the goods. You are consuming both of the goods. Uh, so, this is the way you solve for the quasi-linear goods. Uh, this is the way you will solve for the quasi-linear goods. Hmm? And uh, how does the angel curve looks like for this? Angel curve for good x. So, up until now, 
what is it the thing the 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 thing is that uh, the angel curve okay i'll also draw this for good x so you have x out here you have m out here so your x stars value is m by p1 if 4m p1 minus p2 square is negative so in that case this becomes the uh, this becomes the angel curve for the given value of p1 huh? otherwise x star is p2 square upon 4 p1 square if 4 m p1 minus p2 square is positive hmm? so let us say it is this p2 square upon 4 p1 square mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. Right. And uh, up until this point, let us say it has like this. So till this is not reached. is like this Habita? so till this threshold level is not reached you can just think of like this that is this is the threshold level that is 4m p1 equals to p2 square this is m equals to p2 square upon 4m 4p1 so if your income is less than this if your income is less than this level then of course you will be spending all amount on x and this becomes the angel curve but if your income goes beyond this if your income goes beyond this then this becomes your angel curve are you with me so for x angel curve for good x you with me beta okay so this is what i wanted to do in this recording you can also read variant side by side that's that's a beautiful book uh, which is written i think uh, across the globe that's the best textbook which i think anybody could have that's a classic uh, and you should have this book with you